This episode is brought to you by Wear Buff, your go-to for Buffalo-inspired apparel. Get your hands on stylish t-shirts, hoodies, and more at wearbuff.com. That's W-E-A-R-B-U-F dot com. And make sure you use the promo code TWB at checkout for 10% off your first order. Stay Buffalo proud with Wear Buff. We are continuing our positional review series. This week we'll be in the trenches on the Wandering Buffalo podcast. You're now listening to the Wandering Buffalo podcast with your host, Justin Goddard. Bills Mafia, welcome in and thank you for joining me on this episode of the Wandering Buffalo podcast. My name is Justin. I am your host today. And this show is brought to you by Wear Buff. Um, if you've checked out the site at all, um, we're working with Wear Buff. They have links to clothes, merchandise, all kinds of stuff on our website, uh, Wandering Buffalo, WanderingBuff.com. Um, check it out. New shirts, hoodies, all that coming out on a pretty regular basis. Um, there's a pretty sweet pride shirt up there right now. Um, so if you're looking for, you know, some Buffalo pride gear, um, check it out. It's pretty sweet designs there. Um, this week we're continuing our positional review series and we're going to be in the trenches and I kind of lumped, you know, offensive and defensive line together here. I want to talk about both today. Um, kind of a, a, a hasty transition from offense to defense. Um, but I wanted to do these two position groups together, just, you know, they kind of go hand in hand, but also I share some similar concerns between these two areas. Um, and I'm just doing both of the groups offensively and defensively. Um, as a whole, I I think it's important to, when looking at the trenches, look at everything as as it works together. Um, just because, in particularly with the offensive line, but on the defensive side as well, um, these are two areas where like you're only as strong as your weakest weakest link, and you know. If you have the best left tackle in the league, but your right tackle sucks, then your quarterback's going to get hit a bunch from the right side. Um, so I think it's important to kind of give my feelings on them as a whole. Um, if you've been checking out this positional review series at all, um, it, it's kind of a look at what I liked or didn't like from 2023 and... Um, what we have for 20, 2024, you know, what concerns I have, anything that we could do to improve it before the season starts. Um, so we're going to dive right in and bear with me. It's, you know, kind of a long list of names. I'm not going to talk about, you know, everybody here, um, you know, really in depth. It's kind of just performances we saw last year. Um, and, particularly when I'm looking at the 2024 side. Um, obviously, you know, we haven't had any cut down days or anything yet. So it's it's a bigger list of names, but there's just kind of a few few key areas I want to talk about on each side. Um, so 2023, obviously start off with the Schnoman, Deion Dawkins, Connor McGovern, Mitch Morse, Osiris Torrance, Spencer Brown, Ryan Bates, David Questenberry, Kevin Jarvis, David Edwards, Richard Garage, Tommy Doyle, Alec Anderson, and Ryan Vandemark. That was kind of like the finalized roster with with depth last year. Um, not a crazy amount of names changing from last year, um, but some some pretty key bigger bigger name at least. Um, so this year we're looking at right now Deion Dawkins, David Edwards, Connor McGovern, Osiris Torrance, Spencer Brown, Ryan Vandemark, Elk Anderson, Cedric Van Pran Granger, uh, Kevin Jarvis, Lyle Collins, Tyling Grable, Keaton Bills, Will Clapp, Gunnar Britton, Richard Garage, Mike Edwards, and Travis Clayton. Um, 
So obviously the big piece here that is headed out is Mitch Morse. Um, and I'll throw in there with him too, Ryan Bates. And the bigger names coming in, I would say um, David Edwards was obviously here, but kind of setting up to to get a bit of a promotion here. Um, VPG obviously drafted this year. And Lyle Collins, who I think is an interesting interesting depth piece here. Um, so my thoughts on 2023 was that this is it's the best offensive per, offensive line performance that we've had in front of Josh Allen in, in his career thus far. Um, so that was kind of where I was a little bit bummed out to see Mitch Morse go. Um, just kind of for how long we were talking about, you know, you got to get better at protecting Josh Allen. We got to get these run lanes open, all that. And kind of finally put it together. We had this complete unit and now we're kind of retooling again. Um, I I fully understand it. Um, I think, you know, the whole plan this off season was to get younger and cheaper and, you know, maybe you wanted to keep Morse around for one more year, but w- when we started doing all the all the cap moves, you know, Hoyer, Hyde, Diggs, all all these moves that were happening this year, uh, it's kind of to me, it, if you knew it was in the plan in the next year or two, ripping the Band-Aid off type of deal, um, and I don't I don't hate the plan for you know succession here. And to me, it was for a very long time, you know, oh, it's obviously going to be Bates. You know, we, we brought this guy in. We've we've coached him up. He's been like on the fringe of being a starter for several years. For a long time, we thought he was, you know, the plan after Morse. And th- that was almost seeing Ryan Bates go was almost as big of a surprise to me as Mitch Morris himself leaving um because it was kind it's kind of been we've been talking about Mitch Morris as a possible cap casualty for like three four years now right so it to me it was kind of like when not if we ended up losing Morse but all along I thought the plan was going to be we got Bates slide right in you know been in the system been working with the coaches Maybe we won't miss a beat. Um, and then, you know, we <laughs> we send Bates off too. Um, David Edwards kind of getting a promotion here is something I can get on board with. I think he's he's had success as a starter in the NFL, um, albeit, you know, the last two years he hasn't really registered much for, you know, regular starting. I think he was... He was great as like that move tight end piece and, you know, extra blocker. Um, And, you know, has the continuity with, with uh, Aaron Cromer. So I, I can feel pretty good about this. My, my biggest concern here is I don't want to overuse continuity here, um, but just, thinking about, you know, your offensive line is is as good as your weakest link and just having not played a ton over the past two seasons, I I have my concerns with David Edwards. Um, When we originally brought him in, I was pretty psyched about it. You know, I I think he... I I felt at the time that he had, like, fringe starting potential. Um, and who knows, maybe, maybe we saw enough from him in the building, um, last year to, to feel really good about making this move. Um, but my biggest concern there has been, is, and will remain kind of what we're doing to Dawkins and Dawkins has been, a good to great left tackle for quite some time now. And I think he really showed that last year with cover next to him um I do think there was some room to improve between them mostly like in some run game stuff um but 
this left guard position has just been a revolving door right, pretty much through Dawkins' whole career. You know, you think of some of the guys that we had there, Quentin Spain, um, going back, John Miller. Oh, why can't I think of his name right now? Well, at any rate, it's going to come to me. Um, but there's just been so many players rotating at the guard position, and the offensive line takes time to gel and get on the same page. And I, I kind of wanted to see, you know, back-to-back years of continuity um, with McGovern next to Dawkins. And here we are another year and another switch up. Now, I do think that the sneaky additions here in both Lyle Collins and Cedric Van Pran Granger. I'm going to always struggle with that name. Um, I think these could throw kind of a, a curveball into what we're looking at now. Um, I think Van Pran, Van Pran Granger is he's going to be VPG from now on. Um, I think VPG I don't know if he forces the issue this year, um, but just the messaging that I'm getting from him, the things that I've seen from the people smarter than me through the draft process, I think it's just a matter of time before he ends up in the starting lineup. And is that, you know, playing as a guard? Is that, you know, taking over at center and kicking McGovern back over? Um, I don't know, but I, I, I get the feeling that VPG is going to be on on the field sooner rather than later. And I think Lyle Collins is at the very least kind of your first guy off the bench and he's somebody that the Bills have been after for a while. He's had kind of a weird career arc with injuries and his draft night stuff. Um I think this is kind of a a low risk high reward type signing and you know, sitting here June 18th, like, I wouldn't be surprised if there is a path where a Lyle Collins can beat out David Edwards in the preseason and take over that job. I, I know he's played the majority of his year at tackle, but, you know, he had some guard experience. There's been talk of him, you know, being able to be on the inside. Um, it, it kind of reminds me of this whole situation with Lyle Collins and VPG being brought in, it kind of reminds me of uh, the, the, it was a couple of years ago when Daryl Williams uh, kicked inside to guard because we drafted Spencer Brown. And I, I feel like the way the bills have always added offensive linemen, they, they get guys that can play multiple areas, you know, whether it's, the move that we would expect or not and they try to get their best five out there um i think four of your spots are pretty locked in and i think that left guard spot is is going to be an interesting battle to watch um just how it plays out and and i think it's mostly going to be between those three guys um and whether that means you know we get a couple weeks into training camp and we're like VPG looks good at center, but he's not ready for guard. We're going to kick McGovern back over. Um, whatever the case is, uh, I think I think that's going to be the most interesting spot to watch. Um, so 2023 compared to 2024, I feel like cautiously optimistic to feel about the same as I did last year. Um, I think if you you know, had to replace that guard spot with somebody else. You're getting a guy that was already in the building that, you know, was in play to, to start last year. Um, you got a guy that's been working with Cromer going all the way back to the Rams. Um, so, you know, the expectations, the experience is there. Um, and I feel good about some of these, some of these other guys that could be competing for that spot, you know, both, both now and going forward. Um, so I feel like we've stayed pretty consistent through some changes along the offensive line. We'll see what happens there. Um, my big concern for this group is injuries and 
Not that this is like a group that's, you know, dealt with a bunch and we're waiting for the next one to happen, you know, more along the lines of the NFL is a 100% injury league. Everybody's dealing with something at some point. And we had the benefit of seeing our entire starting offensive line together throughout the whole season last year. Um, So I, I think that's something where, like, how hard do we, you know, crash back down to the mean? Uh, how how much do we have to deal with this year, and and what does our depth look like? Um, like I said, the between VPG and Collins, I feel good about that depth. Um, I think Alec Anderson, Ryan Vandermark as as some rotation guys in there. Um, we haven't seen them a ton in game action, but I feel like that the move to let Bates go doesn't happen if you don't feel good about Alec Anderson. Um, I think when we did see Vandemark, he looked good. Um, and these are guys that have just kind of been around and developing and, you know, maybe won't ever be anything more than depth role players that play in a pinch. Um, but I feel pretty good about this depth going into next season. A um, couple of the interesting guys there, Tylen Grable, um, Travis Clayton, you know, I feel like these guys were kind of just flyers in the draft and, and we'll see what happens. Um, particularly when you're talking about a guy that's in the international pathways program, so he can kind of stick around the, the roster and the practice squad and not count against your roster. And we can see what happens there. Um, I, I'm not going to get too excited, but Aaron Cromer is a fantastic offensive line coach and you're taking a guy with all kinds of physical abilities. Um, And we'll get to this on the defensive side of the ball too. Um, Just kind of seems like the Bills are open to... I don't even know how to say it. They're like open to taking small big swings. Um, You know, oh, we're going to throw this flyer at a guy who's never played football before and if it doesn't work out whatever and I kind of like that approach to especially for like the tail end of the draft and you know some UDFAs and whatnot because you're you're looking at a roster that even with all this change in turnover and you know getting younger at spots we're still pretty much a roster that's pretty locked in for starters across the board and even at that, like depth, so there's not there's not a ton of areas on this roster to you know really force somebody in that you feel like will be an automatic upgrade to to what you have. Um, I know national media is sleeping on us. I know a lot of Bills fans out there think we're going in the completely wrong direction. Um, I still feel really good about you know, the starters on this roster and quite a bit of depth. Um, So seeing some of these, you know, a a little different moves from what you see from a lot of teams um, and just seeing what happens. I mean, it's really no harm, no foul. Like, especially when you consider how many of our, you know, late round picks have gotten plucked from the practice squad over the years. Um, I, I just think it's, it's an out of the box way of approaching, you know, getting guys in the building and hey, can you be depth? Can you develop into something? If not, you know, it costs us very little investment and instead of being, you know, some guy that played football his whole life and got drafted in the seventh round and we end up cutting him and he goes to the practice squad, whatever, uh, we take a chance on a guy that same exact thing might happen or, you know, we might find this untapped potential of a guy that played rugby his whole life because of where he lived, but he would have been great at football. Um, so I think those moves are interesting. I, I know there's a lot of people out there that, you know, think it's a wasted pick, whatever. Uh, I think with this roster, mo- most severe late round picks might go that way. Um, 
they might get plucked from the practice squad. So I'm I'm cool with it. I'm I like it. So moving on to the defensive side of the ball, and this is kind of an area where I have sneaky the biggest concerns with this roster going forward. And similar to the offensive line, I feel like we were starting to get some better play out of this unit. Um, and it, it's been an area where we've seen being invest you know, time and time again, when you see, you know, free agents that didn't work out, some draft picks that didn't work out, and, you know, big spending on Von Miller, which worked out exactly as he planned for about 11 games and has kind of been a dumpster fire since, and we'll see what happens there. Um, but, you know, last year we kind of brought in some some mercenaries and mixed results, Um, but it's kind of another year, another resetting of positions here. And don't get me wrong. We have some, some core pieces there that I really love. Um, and then some question marks, um, just based on, you know, how much you can play these guys, some of the age, um, for how much they rotate players, you know, how effective those guys can be. Um, so looking at last year, Groot, Ed Oliver, Daquan Jones, Shaq Lawson, AJ Epinesa, Jordan Phillips, Tim Settle, um, Cam Klein, Kingsley Jonathan, uh, Eli Anku, Leonard Floyd, Linval Joseph, Puna Ford. Um, this is kind of where I'm concerned is you're losing Leonard Floyd. He led the team in sacks last year on, you know, limited snaps and looked good. Um, Linval Joseph, you know, we added him late season and he was, it was a short stint, but he was impressive while he was in there. And just seeing the reps that he was able to come in and get as he was like 37, I don't know, something like that. Seeing him be able to walk into the building and take those reps and get those game reps just tells me, you know, how much we are lacking with guys like Tim Settle and Jordan Phillips. And then Una Ford, who's somebody that I was super excited about signing. It was like one of my free agent wish lists. Uh, this is a position I wanted to get better at last year. And I I was super excited for Puna to be that guy. And then whatever, you know, whatever's happening in the building that we don't get to see whatever, like, we barely saw Puna Ford last year. And when we did, I thought he looked pretty good. Um, and when I couple that with, you know, what we got from Jordan Phillips and Tim Settle, like, what, like what's going on with our defensive tackle evaluation that we've struggled with this so much and you know a guy that I thought played well in limited reps in Ford you know barely got to touch the field and you know we had Jordan Phillips and Tim Settle out there every week you know Jordan Phillips I I liked for a long time and, and even going into last year I was still pretty excited about him um but he, I just don't think he was effective at all for, you know, how big of a man he is and kind of getting blown off the ball, things like that. Um, so I think there was room to improve, particularly at the defensive tackle spot behind Oliver and Jones. And I think you did that. And we'll look at the names coming in here. Um so, going into 2024, as it stands now, um, you got Groot back, Daquan Jones, Oliver, Epinesa, added Dwayne Smoot, Austin Johnson, Dwayne Carter, Von Miller, Casey Tuhill, um, Eli Anku still in the mix, Deshaun Williams, Javon Solomon, Cameron Klein, Branson Dean, Gable Stevenson, Kingsley Jonathan, 
David Ogwegbu and Ronald Bothroyd. Um, so I, I think bringing in Austin Johnson and Deshaun Williams, I think those are both immediate upgrades over um, Jordan Phillips and Tim Settle. So that's that's room for me to be excited in, in itself. Um, looking at Dwayne Carter, I'm really hopeful for him as a player that this can, with the free agents that we've added and you know, the capital that we've invested in him, that this can be a guy that, you know, kind of develops, can take on more and more. And and maybe we finally have another long-term answer at defensive tackle. Um, Because in particular, you you know, the depth of this position has kind of been a revolving door as well. And this is very similar to like the left guard conversation for me. It's just been a spot that we've seen being addressed over and over again, um, but but not quite getting it right. And I think you you have a chance this year for guys like Austin Johnson and Deshaun Williams to you know come in and make an impact um, in kind of the rotation snaps, and then also building towards the future. Um, the edge position, another, you know, kind of big question mark for me. Um, obviously, you know, Epinesa is getting a bit of a promotion here to being more, it, if as it stands now, I would guess it's Groot and Epinesa kind of doing the majority of the, the starting reps. And I could see Von Miller coming kind of, Kind of like the Floyd role last year of um, obvious, you know, long and late downs, getting after the rusher and not really asking him to do much other than, you know, attack the pocket. Um, You know, coming off the injury last year, he was finally showing some signs of life um, towards the end of the season into the playoffs. Um, But, you know, another year older, maybe that's kind of, well, where we get the value from Miller at this point, and and it it'll never feel good based on the contract we gave him, even though you know he's kind of reworked it to help the Bills out this year. Um, but replacing that sack production from Leonard Floyd, you know, how Epinesa was playing great until his injury and in kind of limited reps. What does that look like as? as he takes on more responsibility, as he's in the game more. Um, Shaq Lawson has kind of been a guy that's been a consistent rotation guy for me, um, and I've loved having him on the team. Uh, I, I think he, he's served his purpose in Buffalo long enough. I'm I'm good with moving on at that position, but that the, the floor he establishes, you know, with his with how fundamentally sound he is the floor that he establishes you know kind of makes it more difficult to just you know straight up one for one replace him and expect the same consistency on a on a snap to snap basis um so concerns there um Dwayne Smoot I like him brought in as as kind of that that rotation piece defensive end um Casey Tuhill was brought in before the draft, honestly. Um not really not really seeing a path to him making the roster at this point. Um, after you draft Javon Solomon. And you know, kind of talk about these two together here, um, because they've been reports coming out, kind of them joined at the hip. Um Javon Solomon and Gable Steven- Stevenson. Um, just kind of staying after practice, working with the coaches, and you know, for for Stevenson being a fifth round pick, you know, Beans had some some real big late round hits um, over his tenure with Buffalo. Um, so I, I slapped some expectations on Solomon, and I I don't think this is you know a, a horribly difficult position group, you know. As I get done talking about, there's not a lot of room to to improve this roster, you know, immediately through 
you know, these young players, the assets that we have to work with. Um, but I, I think Solomon is somebody that could get reps early. And as we look towards, you know, what the future looks like for Vaughn, you know, is, is this his last season? Um, and then just kind of, again, how much we rotate across the defensive line. It, you you basically need four starters um, to know he can make an impact in, in the tail end of this year. You know, going into next season could uh, <clears throat> kind of follow like an A.J. Epinesa trajectory where, you know, he gets more and more opportunities and maybe one day we're talking about him as like the full-time starter. Um, Gable Stevenson, very similar to the Travis Clayton conversation for me of, you know, why, why not take a swing on an absolute freak athlete who's a people mover? Um, it's not something that costs you a ton. And if it doesn't work out, if he, you know, just isn't picking up on football things, whatever. You, you tried something different in a different way. Um, so I, I'm not going to say like I'm excited for that move. I think it's interesting and I, I I see a path where it it could have, you know, future implications. And you, know, you, you talk about uh, guys like Austin Johnson and mm-hmm. Deshaun Williams, who, who I can get excited for being kind of rotation players um, this year. But that the depth that D tackle has been something that we've been trying to sort out for years here. Um, and you know, Daquan Jones getting a little bit older, bringing these guys in, in a one year contract, um, th- there's going to be opportunities, you know, more so going forward, but there are opportunities on, on this roster to, to make an impact on, on the defensive line and, and secure a job going forward. Um, so I do think we have in an interesting group of guys as as we look towards the future. Um, as I look at it right now, uh, this is a group that I I'm not going to sit here in June right now and and say that I think this defensive line is better than last year. Um, I think there's there's paths to me talking myself into it could be better. Um, the first path for that is, you know, just looking at injuries from last year. Um, Daquan Jones obviously missed a good portion of the season. When you talk about Von Miller, you know, still still getting back from that injury. Um, you look at Groot was dealing with a broken foot most of the season. Um, Epinesa was started out really great and, you know, had, I believe it was a rib injury and, you know, kind of came back down to earth a little bit. Um, so, you know, you get these guys healthy for the majority of the season, and, and I think it could be, a, you know, a, a different story. Um, but just looking at the number of question marks I have, um, you just have several guys that you're slotting into a new system again. Um, I think you're still, you're still relying on Von Miller for a good amount, and... You know, there's nothing guaranteed there. He's another year older. Maybe you get, maybe you get, you know, some of that Leonard Floyd rotation pass rusher guy stuff, but that's not something that I'm going to bank on. Um, just, just a lot of questions here, both for this coming season and going forward. And th- this is something that. Bean has talked about in the past about, you know, uh, different position groups. He's talked about it, about like getting these game changing guys and like, well, you don't find that guy very often at, you know, 25, whatever. Um, and I, I think that's, I think we happen to get a version of that in Groot and that just happened to work out for us because of, you know, the COVID year and him not playing and all the weird stuff that went around that. Um, but, you know, you're not finding the Bosa's. You're not finding Khalil Mack very often at, 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 you know, 
pick 30. Um, so I think this is, this is a group that kind of concerns me both now and going forward. Um, I think you're, ex- I, I get a bit of the, you know, counting on taking a step that we had with Gabe Davis as we promoted him to a number two receiver. Um, I'm getting kind of similar vibes with that to a- AJ Epinesa. And I, I love Epinesa and he's had his moments. He's had interceptions. He's, you know, had moments and seasons where he has more pass breakups than player, like top end cornerbacks in the secondary. Um, I think he does a lot of things really well. Was that kind of a benefit of, you know, being in a rotation or, or was this just kind of like a, a little bit of a slower development that took some time? Um, we'll, we'll see, but that that's a question mark for me. Um, and then just kind of all these new guys slotting in and, you know, playing in a new system and playing with different players next to him, all, all that stuff that goes into it. Um, a lot of room for me to be excited about this group going forward as well, though. Um, Dwayne Carter, somebody that I'm really excited about. Javon Solomon for for being, you know, a late round pick. Do I do I anticipate him becoming like the next Von Miller? Um, no, not necessarily. Um, do I think he could develop into, you know, one of these rotation guys that we? keep having to find as we <clears throat> round out the roster. Yeah, I think that could happen. Um, what I really like about Solomon thus far is just kind of all the messaging coming out, everything that we're seeing in reports from him is, is like, he's coming early, he's staying late, he's putting in the work, he's, you know, doing one-on-one stuff with with the coaches after practice. Um, so I, I think... He's kind of in a similar vein to some of these some of these guys we've kind of taken flyers on, uh, like a Cameron Klein, of like, hey, there's some talent there. Let's see if we can lock into it. And if it if it doesn't work out, we didn't invest a ton. Um, but what also gets me really excited about Solomon is just I I can't ignore being success rate in the later rounds with with a lot of these particularly like fifth round picks and I know it's a kind of a crap shoot and this because you hit on fifth round picks before doesn't mean that you're going to keep doing it and all these players are going to turn into studs um but at a certain point there, there's enough data points to say that you know it's not just flukes. The the Bill Scouting Department takes takes it very seriously all the way through the draft, and they find they find gems in the late rounds. So, somebody that I'm very interested to see as we get into preseason, what kind of impact he can have, um, because I don't think it takes much to to crack into, you know, a rotation piece in this defensive line right now. Um, so very, very excited to see Solomon, Dwayne Carter, and, and you know, even to an, a certain extent, Gable Stevenson, just because why not? You know, <laughs> why not? See what happens. Um, and that's going to wrap it up for the, the, the trenches here. Um, if you want to drop a comment, let me know what you think about either side of the ball here. Do you share some of my concerns? Do you think that I'm, you know, just overly worried about things that I don't need to be? Um, love to hear from you. Um, and I do thank you again for joining me on this week's episode. Um, as always, I do kindly ask, like, share, subscribe, check out the website, tell a friend, um, help us keep this momentum going. Um, we got a bunch of articles coming out on the website, just kind of diving into all, all kinds of different topics for the off season. Um, and like I said, we're partnered with wear buff. So um, check out some of their clothing on the website, some sweet designs, 
more stuff coming out and hey, that's it as always thank you again for joining me and go bills <laughs>